We have Jess Lee on the show. Jess Lee, welcome to the show, Brain Health Unchaining Your Pain. How are you? Hi, I'm doing so well. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm absolutely fab. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It's just, I'm really excited to talk about your story and your journey. I'm excited to, to delve today. in. I'm excited to delve in with you. You know, it's not often you get to do an interview with a doctor. So <laughs> I feel like this is almost going to be a little bit of a therapy session as well. <laughs> And well, also, you say my name like a pro. Thanks for saying it one word, which is very important to me because there is one other Jess Lee in the world, but she's two words. Uh -huh. So it's Jess Lee. And uh, she's <laughs> she's uh, she's an Asian um, performer. And coincidentally enough, we actually both were in uh, major singing competitions and have songs with the same names, which is weird. <laughs> and uh, if you're looking for a great Part, like a Mandarin tune that you don't necessarily understand, but if you do understand Mandarin, just like two words, the Asian singer is great, but I'm, I'm the American one. So <laughs> one, one word, <laughs> one word, yes. one voice, yes. Yes. one mission. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Well, welcome. So, Jess Lee, you've been on The Voice, talking about The Voice, season 14, yes. working with uh, Team Blake, and now you have your own amazing fan base and songs and just so much growth since that, uh, since The Voice. Just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and who you are, what you do, and who you serve. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, um, as we said before, my name is Jess Lee. Uh, I, I am an international national touring artist. Um, I really started um, delving full time 100% into music when, like you had mentioned, I uh, was off the voice season 14. Um, I had Kelly and Blake turn for me. I chose Blake. Um, it was a really exciting journey. And then after that, that's really truthfully when the work started. It was, uh, you know, being able to get off TV and figure out how to keep that momentum going. So since then, um, um, you know, I've toured the country and the world. Uh, I've been able to share some of the biggest stages with some uh, biggest stages with, with some of the biggest names in uh, country music and pop music. Um, and yeah, it's just a really exciting ride for me to be able to, um, you know, have the the true blessing of getting to do what I do and what I love most every day. So, um, which is being a, a recording artist. I am a writer as well. I write for other artists. I have a number 12 um, uh, radio single right now for another wow. artist named Brian Lannon. Thank you. That means wow. the world. Yes. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I love to, um, take my talents and use it to help other people say what they want to say as well in their music and in their writing and get to um, help them mold their artistry, which is really cool. And that's uh, not something I initially thought I was going to get involved with, with, to be honest. I was very yeah. selfish about my song babies and didn't want to share them. And I was like a protective mama. If you tried to <laughs> take something, I'd bite your hand. But <laughs> like, but mine, <laughs> mine. Yeah, that's exactly. But now, you know, um, it's, it's funny how when time goes by, you really do – uh, mature in a lot of ways uh, through your music, but also in the business. And uh, mm -hmm. and I've been able to now turn music into what it really is, which is a business. And it's exciting because it's a business that I get to do, but also really um, experience getting to do what I love and share that with everybody every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love your music. So I've been Thank listening you. to it. And your voice is just so soulful and just Thank so you. beautiful and really deep. Um, Thank you so much. You know, that means the world. Your soul. That means you the really world. <laughs> I, you know, I, um, that means so much more than, you know, actually, because I initially, a lot, some people don't know this. I initially tried out for the voice, uh, four years prior, I believe is what it was before. Uh -huh. Um, I actually ended up getting on the show, the show came back and called me later on to come on. I never had an initial audition. Um, and they immediately flew me out, but four years prior, before that, um, I actually was told that I had a premature vocal. Um, I wasn't probably going to keep doing music and, uh -huh. uh, and they just were not about having me on the show. And, uh, wow. you know, look what happens four years later, you know? <laughs> so it's, um, it's very interesting because, um, I never had any, uh, professional vocal training or anything except when I was on the show. Um, because uh -huh. they do hook you up with coaches and you do a lot of, um, behind the scenes training. That was the first time I ever experienced anything like that. But um, it's funny. I my <laughs> I, I'm a little vulgar. I can't help it. My team and I joke around, and they were like, "Your balls just needed to drop." That was it. So <laughs> that was it. My balls just needed to drop, so, and I believe it because it was like nothing changed except the fact that I got older um, and I sang a lot more, 
and I was doing it a lot yeah. more. And, you know, just by doing something over and over and over again and really growing into my sound, I always had the mm -hmm. the correct pitch and I was always on the right key and everything. But tonality wise, I needed to round out my vocal and time mm -hmm. just needed to do that. I needed to become a woman. So. <laughs> It's amazing though, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I can't claim to have a, 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 any voice like yourself at all, but I, I grew up <laughs> as uh, going through uh, training of, of um, singing. Yeah. And it's amazing how important it is to just let time do some of the work and, and let your voice evolve as you, uh, yeah. as you grow. It, it's Perfect. funny too, because I work, I work with all males. So like, uh -huh. of course, everything is a male a male version of it and that's what that's what my team said to me and i was like well i don't really know what that means in real life for me what happened but i kind of understand what you're saying i guess i just needed to mature <laughs> well i guess from a brain health perspective because this show is all about brain health is we become who we surround ourselves with so maybe, right. that's, what, maybe <laughs> that's what happened maybe yes that's very true <laughs> <laughs> so talking about the show because this is all about brain health and unchaining your pain yeah what does brain optimal brain health mean for you personally you know first off it's so important and it's something that i never realized um uh -huh. was so important until um until that till until the show honestly because um, after the show, I ended up going through a little bit of depression and mm -hmm. I, it's, um, you know, so much glitz and glamor and so much stuff happens and then you're thrown out to the wild, you know, and, mm -hmm. and now it's, now you're doing it on your own and you're having kind of figure it all out where, um, you know, you were appointed people and you were appointed a team for a lot of things. And, um, you know, when you're off, all of it kind of gets taken away. And I really started delving into brain health. Um, after the show and how that really started for me was taking the time to, um, dive into meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, meditation was probably um, at the time a, a life saving thing for me because um, brain health to me is being able to go deep with your, within yourself and to know that everything that you're feeling, even though you may not be 100% happy with it all, you can look mm -hmm. at it and you can be genuinely happy with who you are and where your life is going and waking up every day knowing that you are feeling like you have purpose and you're feeling mm -hmm. like you are um moving in the direction of where you want your life to be because you know you have to be able to for me you have to be able to really be honest with yourself and understand that you're on an, uh, a never-ending journey you know nothing really is ever going to get done and there's no t there's no time limit to it because you no. don't know what you don't know when your expiration date is you know so you have That's to be right. able yeah you have to be able to let things go in a lot of ways. As much as it's important to be a hustler and and work on things, you have to be able to let go just as much. And um, you know, I think all of those encompasses what I feel like brain health is. I feel like it's not just a a one size fits all thing, and I feel like it's a multi dimensional thing. I agree, and I think it you know it's different for everybody what, what optimal brain health is for them because our brains are all completely unique and Absolutely. we all go on our own personal journey and i and i love it that you know you 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 realized how important it was based on your experience on the voice and and the, and the aftermath of the glitz and glamour and I, for for you where where was your what was your trigger that pushed you into that you know feeling depressed because people often the triggers are very different for everybody yeah um can you remember back to the time that really you you started to notice or perhaps you didn't notice it that just was the catalyst oh absolutely um, the catalyst was a hundred percent and i mean i've talked about it before it was it was a hundred percent being on a show where i was gone and everything was so fast-paced and i had schedules and i had teams and i had makeup artists and mm -hmm. all these things and when i got let go i lost all of that. And I had to work my way back to that. And mm -hmm. it felt like at that time, because everything was so fast paced, even though it, it wasn't necessarily a rock bottom, but it felt that way in that moment. And it was mm -hmm. all encompassing for me. The fact that, um, I felt like all of that was stripped away as fast mm -hmm. as it came, you know? So, um, I love, I'm a very much of a person that I thrive on fast pace living. The more, <laughs> the more I get, the more excited I am, the more I capitalize yeah. on that momentum. And I'm very like, I harness it and I'm like, 
yes, and I keep it going kind of thing. And the second thing starts slowing down, I I, I start to lose the energy, you know? Okay. And it's, I've always had to been a person, I've always had to, um, you know, the first step is denial, right? Getting over that and realizing what is triggering that. Um, yeah. And that was the first thing I had to do is realize, well, what's causing me to go into these slumps, it's the slower seasons in life, which are always going to come. So, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a matter of being able to um, accept those times and figure out how to re-navigate what you can do to, you know, mm -hmm. pick that back up when it comes to me and um, my life and the shoes that, you know, I'm, I'm walking in right now. Cause mm -hmm. kind of like you said earlier, you know, I mean, I, I, I live by that for a lot of things, but including brain health that, you know, brain health is not a one size fits all thing because mm -hmm. everybody is living their own experience. Everybody is living their own life experience. And until you're in that person's you know, body, which <laughs> who knows, maybe one, one day someone could be if they reincarnate, I, you know, but, <laughs> but who knows? You, we never know until we, we never know until we croak. Right. So it's all, <laughs> it's all assumption, but, but you know, like you never know, um, unless you're living that person's life, you're not dealing with even if you had a similar situation, you're still not dealing with all the circumstances as that person has personally in their life, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I know you mentioned that you can't, you, you, you know, living with passion and purpose is really important to you and living with a, the fast pace. So how have you managed to cope with this during COVID? When, yeah, that's uh, a good question. Everything. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because it was down. another, it was, an, that's such a good question. You know, it was another example of things just kind of just taking an abrupt halt. Um, and it was, it was rough in the beginning. It was really rough because, you know, I had um, a ton of touring that just was completely ripped away. Um, especially too, it almost felt like it was even a little more rough than the voice because it was things that I had worked, put so much time into at that point. It wasn't yeah. just like all of a sudden it was there. Um, you know, I had worked my butt off to develop the team very similar to what I had on the show um, mm -hmm. for myself. And these were my people now, not appointed people. And, uh, you know, to feel like so everybody had to slow down and everything had to kind of, um, a lot of things had to go on the back burner because of the way that it trickles down. You know, when, when, mm -hmm. when you're not touring and you're not working, you're not giving these people the jobs that they need. And it just, it was a lot of stress for me because now it was like, I'm the boss. And I'm giving these people jobs. It's not like the voice mm -hmm. appointing me people, you know? So mm -hmm. um, it was a stressful time. And it was a lot of, um, it was a, another moment for me to be able to uh, dig deep and go within, which is, I always think is, if you're, you know, if you're, whatever your experience, and I, and I, I believe this, you know, and, and, and there's, it's no right or wrong. And I, I, you know, if someone doesn't, that's just, I, I respect people's opinions, but I'm a big believer that you're, you're, uh, external experience is from, you know, what from it starts from what's inside of you. Um, and you know, anytime I'm experiencing, I don't like something uh, externally, I try to go within and try mm -hmm. to change and try to figure out what, um, what's happening within myself that could be causing this to manifest in my physical reality. I think that's really important because people don't often take the time to go within. Yeah, and to it's understand. a scary thing. <laughs> it can it can be a scary thing, and that's the reason it took me so long. Yeah. You know, I I used to just push it off and push it off, and uh, you you don't know what you're gonna find, you know. And a lot of the times, the first time I did it, it was things that I had harnessed up for years that I felt about my dad uh -huh. that I never realized because I was just like, oh no, I forgive him, you know, or screw him, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's sometimes when you shove things off, you don't realize that you're harnessing and holding on to things. Um, that you don't even realize subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Could you tell tell the listeners, for those that don't know your story, a little bit about your dad? Because I know it was a really difficult time for you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, long story short, you know, there was a lot of really specific scenarios. But um, growing up till I was about 13 years old, um, mm -hmm. I experienced uh, mental abuse in the beginning, which led to uh, physical abuse from my father. Um, you know, I grew up in a really small town. The first town that I grew up was a town called Loxahatchee. And like at the time, you know, no joke, like it was one of those towns that was like 500 people in it. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it was a tiny, tiny, tiny little town. Um, you know, when you left because everybody knew each other, it was like, it, it, it made an indent in the town because, you know, it's just, it was so little. And then we moved to a mm -hmm. place called Stewart. Um, and, you know, coming from a place where, 
I initially grew up in such a small area. Um, it was all about family. Like there's just not a lot of people. So with a lot of those small towns, it's like everything's about being with the family, being with the family, being with the family. But um, all I ever wanted to do from, since I was a little girl was be out and, and out of my house. Escape. Because it was, yeah, escape because it was such a toxic place, you know, and mm -hmm. only because of my father, you know, I had a great relationship with my sisters um, and my mother who was an absolute angel. But um, I like to preface all of that with, you know, uh, it's, I've had people be like, well, why have, why did your mom not leave? Why did your mom not leave that situation? And until mm -hmm. you experience what it's like being with an abuser and having kids with an abuser, you just don't know how hard it is. Um, especially mm -hmm. being, you know, a, a, a mother that did not work, you know, she was financially taken care of by my father. Um, and to have to just uproot your life and make all those life changes. Um, it's scary, you know? And yeah, even, you know, I was a victim of that looking back and being like, like, well, why did we not leave? Why did we not get out of that situation, you know, earlier? And then you grow up and you mature and you look back and hindsight really explains a lot of those answers. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it was a hard, hard situation. And, um, my mom, you know, excused herself from that as fast as she could so gracefully and more gracefully than, than a lot of people I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. and I have so much respect for her, but, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where, um, I experienced, uh, a lot of, you know, mental and physical turmoil, uh, turmoil growing up. Um, and for the longest time, it really took a toll on my psyche. It really, mm -hmm. I, I pushed off doing a lot of the things that I wanted to do forever because I grew up all of my life being told, uh, I wasn't good enough. Um, being mm -hmm. told that I was never going to succeed in things, being told that anytime I went and w went to go try something that, you know, I was in, in a nicer terms that I was a loser. I was a piece of shit or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I've been told a lot worse things than that, <laughs> um, by my dad. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, um, when you're, when you are told that by the person that's genetically programmed to love you, it definitely screws you up for a little while. Mm -hmm. And, uh, how did was, you, it was a big journey to make to make the change to who I am today. Yeah. That's all I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, I was gonna I was gonna ask you because obviously when you're a kid, you just you create this coping mechanism that only you, you know, you based on the skill set that you have at time, which can be really difficult when you're right. a child. So, how how did you deal with it as a kid? How did you cope with that situation? And and then the second follow on question is how did that manifest for you? as well, you were growing up? That's a great question because my cope, my coping, my escape was music. It was, oh, um, right. which is so weird. I've always been one of those girls that, and I still am like, I've got a very angsty dark side to me. It's just, it's uh -huh. the way that I am. Um, it's always this mysterious side that like I never let anybody into. Um, and you know, I would literally be a, a little girl and I'd go listen to like Hawthorne Heights or some like dark, dark rock music that I probably should yeah. not have been listening to, but I downloaded <laughs> off LimeWire and, you know, I somehow <laughs> found it online and my mom was mad that I'd find it, but I'd still find it. And, uh, um, you know, I'd go and I just kind of, um, I'd escape into the music. And a uh -huh. lot of the times I find my, found myself listening to as weird as it sounds, other people that were talking about pain and talking about things okay. that they went through. And, for whatever reason, it was relatable to me. It was like, you're not alone. That's all I felt when I listened mm -hmm. to this stuff is that <clears throat> you're not alone. Um, and there is someone out there in this world experiencing something similar as you or experiencing hard times like you are right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, um, because I, my family grew up listening to a lot of um, like country music, like traditional country music being in the country. So like, you know, a lot of Dolly and a lot of Tanya and Waylon and Merle. And, uh, and I just felt like such a rebel going and listening to all this dark rock music. Um, <laughs> and then, and then that opened the door to, um, so much more. And I started consuming all of this music and it just became like every genre you could imagine. Now I wanted to listen to it. I wanted to hear yeah. what someone had to say and what their story was. And, um, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, all consuming to me and I just would drown myself in that. And, mm -hmm. um, it kind of isn't that far fetched simply for the fact that my grandparents are touring musicians. So music has always been something in my blood. It's always been naturally something that I felt like I could turn to and there was always safety in it. And it was something that would never let me down. Um, mm -hmm. you know, unlike my dad, 
And, yeah. uh, you know, it was, uh, it was always a promise that was kept because my dad didn't ever keep any. And, uh, you know, it was, um, my escape. And, and as I grew more and more in love with being able to let it take me on the journey, um, that it did away from what, what, what my troubles were, um, it grew more into a love of me wanting to start pursuing it. And as mm -hmm. I kind of understood more and more growing up, what my family did and what my grandparents did as touring musicians, I grew an interest in that. And mm -hmm. What took me longer than I would have liked, honestly, I, I wish I would have started like Taylor Swift at like 13, you know, doing that and, and yeah. chasing after music. But I didn't because I had such low self-confidence. So for the longest time, yeah. it was just me living in it and sitting in it and appreciating it um, until I developed um, the confidence that I needed, which is a long story on its own with how I uh, eventually started believing in myself, um, and pushed myself in my mind and my body to another limit. So what, what was the starter point for you? What was the firecracker that started you on this, uh, singing journey from listening to music to singing? Yeah. To actually start pursuing it. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's a long one. So, um, I, I'll tell the, the, the cliff notes version. So, <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's long, it's years and years well, of me okay. just putting it off. But, um, what, what happened was, uh, I eventually, um, had a terrible breakup and mm -hmm. it started because of me having like an actual interest in pursuing music. Um, there was a, a, a guy that would come in and he'd get sandwiches. I worked in the sandwich shop. Um, and, uh, he'd come in and he'd get sandwiches. And one day just finally, we kind of started we struck an accord just talking like finally just kind of, it was more than just like, what do you want on your sandwich today? Mayo or mustard, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he, we started talking he started telling me how, you know, he plays guitar and he was a lead singer in his band and all this stuff. And I was yeah. like, Oh, that's so cool because I love music, you know? And, uh, he was telling me how, yeah, you know, I used to open for Metallica and I was like, Oh, what? Like you opened for Metallica <laughs> It blew my mind. I'm like, this whole time I've been making your damn sandwich and I didn't even know I was making a sandwich for a star, you know? That's what yeah. I thought. So um, we kind of started talking. He'd come in more and more. And I was like, that's really cool. So, you know, what you know, what stopped you? And he would tell me a story. And then eventually he was like, you know, if you ever want, you seem so interested in this. Um, you know, I have an extra guitar. I've got um, – you know, I'm, I, I used to write stuff. He's like, just let's maybe one day hang out and play some guitar and see if we want to write a song together. And I was like, cool. Like I had never, I'd never done that with anybody before. Mm -hmm. I'd never just like sit around and played music with someone and, and like delve into the creational process of it and not just mm -hmm. like sitting around listening to it, you know? Um, and, uh, I went to go hang out with this guy and the boyfriend that I was with at the time was not happy about it. And he uh, was already showing a lot of similar um, traits as my father. Um, okay. They always say they always say that you have to date date uh, what you know, you know, and you yeah. will go you will go through a phase of dating what you know before you finally grow out of that and um, break the cycle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cycle was not yeah. broken yet. Uh, he was an absolute jerk, and okay. uh, I realize that now. Um, but you know. Uh, Back then, I just I was all consumed by him, um, and I was so excited. And he was very controlling. And what it was the same cycle. What, what came from controlling became some mental abuse, which started becoming the very early signs of physical abuse. And thank God, mm -hmm. it never got to a point where it was bad. But there were some times where I was absolutely pulled or dragged or you know pushed in ways that I never should have been pushed by mm -hmm. a man or a lover. You know, at nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I moved out way too young. I was already living with this guy way too young, a town apartment. Ladies do not move out in your young teens. Just saying right now, just don't do it. So did you feel <laughs> trapped again? Like, I was very because trapped. Because of your sit situation. Absolutely. I was very trapped. I had, you know, a lease with him. It was my first time moving out. My mom had told me not to go. Mm -hmm. I did it anyway, because that's what you do when you're young and dumb. And, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I, I was very trapped and, uh, I wanted so badly to, uh, hang out with this new friend that I made. And one night I just went and I did, and, yeah. uh, he went crazy when I came back, the 
my the, my ex boyfriend went nuts and literally was throwing plates at me and wow. um, coming at me and lunging at me and pushing at me and uh, I I ran out. I remember calling my mom and I was like, "Mom, you were right. I never I never should have done this. I never should have left. I never should have left the house this early." I you know especially with someone that I hadn't been dating long enough and. Um, mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was so, I was, you know, was apologizing and she's like, well, you know, I, you can't be there. We'll, we're going to come and get your stuff. And it was like, instantly they were moving me out. And, um, wow. and, uh, it was, uh, such an embarrassing thing that the guy ended up finding out and he was like, well, I don't, I don't even want to deal with this drama. Like, I don't want to deal with this drama. So I had lo kind of lost my friend in that process. Now my new friend. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, what did I like? Well, I felt like it wasn't even any of it was worth it at that point. Um, and did he stay a friend? No, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. He say. just, it was a lot of drama. He was like, I'm not <laughs> dealing with this. So, uh, which is yeah. understandable. So, um, it led me into now all of a sudden, because I loved what that was. I loved writing. We wrote a beautiful song yeah. together. We took some videos and like made content. It was my first time ever doing anything like that. Um, and I was so excited about that, that now I was like on a mission to find more people. I didn't, I didn't care about boys. Like I was like, I was on a mission to find out who played music in this little town and seeing if anybody would want to hang out with me and write music mm -hmm. with me and maybe teach me a little more about what I could learn. Um, and you know, I think just that mind shift just so much. And I, there's really no explanation for it. It was just like all of a sudden I started attracting what I was constantly thinking about, which was mm -hmm. that. Um, and I attracted, um, this guy into my life who he introduced me to my first producer. And along the lines, I was like, Oh, I just want to write. I just want to write, 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 because I'm, I don't have the money to put into this right now. Um, I'm scared. I don't really know if my stuff is good enough. And Shortly around that same time, I ended up meeting um, this person who started uh, introducing me to who became my fitness coach. And okay, uh, yeah, and I started training. I was overweight at the time. I was drastically uh -huh. overweight at the time because I, I had been an athlete all of my life, um, uh -huh. and I had I had quit playing sports for that previous ex I had talked about because I just wanted to spend a bunch of time with him. He, he ended up be literally becoming all consuming and like finding a way for me to just be there all the time, you know, just around him. How old and, were uh, you I, when this was all going on? What was your, right? What was your I age? I actually don't say my age during that time, just because oh. I, 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 I won't, I don't like to talk about my age, um, during that time, just because it was just too young. It was too young. Um, that's, that's yeah. the one thing I, that's the one thing I won't say okay. is age time frames, but I was much too young. I should not have even. Uh, the only me. reason I say it is because yeah. our brains evolve during our teen yes. years, and we don't yes. pretty mature until we're twenty-five as females and twenty-eight as males from that. a brain I, perspective. I don't doubt that at all. Like looking in yeah. hindsight, I was far too young. I should never have yeah. been spending that much time with a person um, at all, honestly. And nonetheless, jumping out and moving in with someone, yeah. you know, um, I was way too young. But yeah. um, which is that's probably the only thing that like that's the one thing I won't really name age. No, times. no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I will tell you the whole damn story. So, <laughs> uh, so. I ended up meeting this guy who I was uh, working out. I was, I had this mission in my head. I don't know why it was just in my head that I was like, you know what, while I write and while I do this, while I build my portfolio and I really become an artist and, you know, not just some person that just loves music. Like I really become an artist of my own. I'm going to find myself also physically because like I said, mm -hmm. I, I gained so much weight. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had no confidence when it came to my, my physical self. Um, nonetheless, still working through all of my emotional baggage from my dad and now this ex-boyfriend mm -hmm. and all this BS. Right. So started training. Um, and how I ended up meeting that guy was I would go to the gym and I'd train and, and I'd go right with this kid every once in a while and I'd work and I was juggling all this stuff. And one day I was, uh, training on my own and I was looking really frustrated. And, uh, cause I, I had started plateauing. I was just doing all this cardio and like all of a sudden I had dropped, like, I can't even remember how much weight it was on my own. It was just a ton, a ton of weight on my yeah. own, but I just plateaued. Um, and I was so frustrated one day and like, I just, I guess he could just tell because I was just had an attitude <laughs> and, uh, 
<laughs> which is very, I'm very like, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. That's something that's still never changed on me. I'm Italian. So like when I'm feeling okay. sassy, it comes out, <laughs> but it's, um, so he telling me, he walks up to me out of nowhere and he's like, Hey, I always see you working in here so hard. And you know, you just seem kind of frustrated today. And like, is there something wrong? And I'm like, and I just like, was like, yeah, you know, I'm just, I've been so upset. Like, I just, I, I've been working so hard and coming in here for the past, you know, few months or whatever. And I'm, and I've dropped all this weight, but I, I can't get to the rest of the, you know, to the rest of the way with where I want to go with my, with my yeah. body. And I see all these girls and they all look so toned and like, I'm not getting toned. Like I'm, and <laughs> he was like, well, you have to do the weights. And I'm like, the weights. And I'm like, that's like taboo as hell. Like girls don't lift weights. Like that's just not a thing. And he was like, yeah, they do. And he started, pulls out his phone and he starts showing me all these pictures of all these competitors. And I had like, I didn't even, I was not even familiar with the figure competing in bodybuilding world at the time. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh my God, these, these women are beautiful. And he's like, yeah, they all lift weights. And I'm like, what? Like I was mind blown. Like I just couldn't even <laughs> fathom it. And I'm like, you don't get bulky. You don't get big. You don't get like, he's like, no, no, not if you don't take steroids. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. So he, all of a sudden, uh, he started just training me. He started just training yeah. me. And what led to that was, uh, him and I actually dating, uh, and later on down the road. And he, um, he introduced me to my, my figure coach and he was like, listen, you're, you're killing it. And he's like, you have the perfect figure to go and, compete. And he's like, and if not, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll introduce you to this coach just to train you really hard and you can do it for personal reasons. But if you ever want to compete, she's like the queen of competitions. And I was like, I kind of want to try it and <laughs> kind of want to try it. And like, it was like this still, the music was just me on the, it was kind of still on the back burner, but I was still yeah. like easing my way into it during this time, starting to feel comfortable with who I was really feeling a fire for something that I really mm -hmm. felt like I was getting direction in because I still mm -hmm. felt really lost about where I was going to go with my music and everything. And, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was like, yeah, I, I kind of want to do it. And he's like, well, you know, competing is, it's about, 12 weeks of like really hard training and dieting. He's like, sometimes it could take a little longer. He's like, since this is your first show, you know, it might take a little longer and we'll try to get you ready for a show. We had a show in plan. Didn't make it. I wasn't ready for it. My coach would not let me go. And then we had another show plan. Still wasn't ready yet. And then all of a sudden she's like, you're starting to look ready. And she's like, let's go do this. Uh, let's try to compete with this one. Um, I forgot. I even forgot what the name of the show was, but it was like, some sort of pro-am show or whatever. And uh, she's like, you know, we'll throw you in there with the with the amateurs and, uh, you know, we'll have you do novice and um, any other division we can throw you in for your first time. I'm like, okay, cool. So I trained myself down and like, I literally at this point, like all I wanted to do was <clears throat> feel comfortable in that uh -huh. swimsuit. Like I, I would have won in my mind just feeling like I could get up there and I felt like I – wanted to look and it felt beautiful and I felt mm -hmm. confident. Um, and I got up there and I felt hella confident. I felt so hella confident. Wow. That I, I strutted my stuff and I ended up taking first place in everything, every single, wow, comp great. every single competition that they had my novice. Um, I went and <laughs> I took the overall, which is basically the entire show for people that have competed before. Um, and I was on such a high. And, uh, at that point that was quite honestly, the big confidence moment for me where I was like, I just like went through my personal boot camp of life. Like to mm -hmm. me, that felt like boot camp. It, we, I was training so hard at four in the morning every mm -hmm. single day. And I'd literally have to go in and I'd have to do an hour of cardio. And then I do an hour of training and then I'd come back at night. And then I do another round of cardio for another hour. And it was like, it was like, I had never been in my whole life. Even when I was playing tennis and I was playing USTA tennis and traveling the country playing some of the biggest, um, you know, tournaments in the world for, uh, USTA. Um, I, I still never felt like it was that challenging. Like it mm -hmm. for me to come in and do that figure competition. It was the hardest I'd ever worked for anything in my whole life. And I was like, I, I, I was so happy with, with, with the results and I was so How happy. How did with that the change it? 
How did that change you? Because like we talk about the four quadrants, I talk about the four quadrants of well-being, your emotional, your physical, your mental and your spiritual. And we, you've already mentioned that you're, you know, mentally you felt crushed when you were in a previous yeah. relationship, physical abuse, the, yeah. the spiritual, you know, going on that spiritual journey to find what you're passionate and purpose, your passion and purpose. Yeah. How did that sort of physical activity change you in, emotionally and and you mentioned it made you feel more confident. Did it did it change your, how you managed yourself emotionally as well? Absolutely. I know it sounds a little superficial when I tell someone how important the physical is. And I and I say yeah. that in it's not about like the physical. Like I've I'm not the fittest I've ever, ever been in my life. I'm healthiest actually, um, which is weird. Uh, because when you're training like that, it's not for health, it's purely for aesthetics yeah. and how mm -hmm. far you can push your body. Um, I'm the healthiest I've ever been, but getting to that point was so important to me because it wasn't about like having a 10 pack abs. Like it wasn't about any of that. Yeah. Like, ultimately that was so cool. And to be able to know that I could tell myself that I wanted that and push myself to those limits that I never thought was number one. It was being able to say I'm stronger than I ever thought I was. That's number mm -hmm. one. Number two and the biggest one. And I tell this to everybody, it's, it's, it's literally it's not the result of what you're getting. It's the fact that every freaking day I was making sure that I took that time that I needed to block everybody freaking out and invest in me. And that mm -hmm. was the biggest thing was taking the time to be like, you know what? I'm not available during this time. I'm investing in myself. I'm doing something that I want to do for myself. And it's really important to me. And, uh, it's a, it's part of a goal of mine and, and, and mm -hmm. it's, and, and it's just extremely, you know, valuable to me and, um, and being able to keep up with that consistency was the mm -hmm. biggest thing. And it was a life changer for me because, you know, when things got hard for me, a lot of the times I was very much so the person that would just throw in the towel, um, and that show and competing at that level, which I did like three more times after that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I did it over and over and over again and pushing myself to that limit constantly was literally me just being like, I'm telling myself to do this. And when the shit gets hard, I didn't give up because yeah. there were many times where the, I wanted to just be like, screw this, like mm -hmm. forget this. Like I'm not get. I'm putting a lot of time in and I wish it was moving way faster. Then looking back, it actually moved really, really fast. But yeah, um, you know, but when you're working so so hard like that, and you're pushing yourself to the to the the most physical level you've ever pushed yourself yeah. to, where you're just throwing up because you worked so yeah. hard, and and you know, you're just mentally, you know, frazzled, and because you're just you know, so you're pushing yourself to limits you've never been. It mm -hmm. is so motivating. And beyond. Yeah. It is so, <laughs> so unreal motivating to yourself to be like, damn, I did that. Like I did yeah. something that like only like, you know, a small, t I think it's like, I think only like two, one or 2% of the world, you know, gets themselves down to that level of, um, yeah. you know, of body fat and, and will compete and do that. And it's such a small, like little world that, that competition world. Um, but my gosh, those are some of the, some of the, if it's, if it's right, I mean, there's people that obviously they get caught up, they can get caught up in, in the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. but, um, I was able to find a deeper message than that in the end. And just realizing that that was really what I needed. I needed to kick my own ass. Like I needed mm -hmm. to be like, Hey, you're going to do this. <laughs> you can and do this. You have no choice and you need to see it through. There's you can't just give up, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I was, that was the biggest like mental change for me. And how, what was the big shift that happened for you? How did that set the new baseline for you going forward? What was the, what was the shift and how did you m use that for yourself and in, in to get you to where you are today? Yeah. Well, to shift into music, I appreciate that question because it really was the introduction to that. It was the most important part was knowing that I, I can, that I can tell myself I'm going to do something and I can, um, and then I started realizing after I was competing, I was like, you know what? I've been spending all this time still doing this building, which was, I felt so necessary, but, um, I think now it's time to make the shift because I was still investing. I still have to invest so much time into the competition world of things. And I was like, you know what? I feel really comfortable with myself. Um, I think it's time to start applying some of this newfound confidence to my songs. So mm -hmm. what became me going and 
um, you know, having like co-writes and stuff. Um, it was now me and my, that was, I don't, I don't even consider the co-writes that I was having, uh, even real rights. My first real co-write, co-write was when I went out to Nashville and that was the first true co-write experience that I had. Um, and I'm so grateful for like the warm up co-writes that I had in my little town yeah. because, um, I got out there and I wasn't like a complete dimwit. Like I kind of knew <laughs> a little bit of what was going on. So, um, but you know, it was all just this process of me kind of warming myself up to that. And because of the way that it unfolded and I, I really didn't have any sort of strategy behind it. It just kind of was the way that it unfolded. And I thought uh -huh. in my head, it was the best way to do it at the time. Um, I did have this newfound confidence of now, you know, going in and writing with some of the biggest writers in the world, you know, and my first co-write was actually with, with one of the biggest writers in the world. And I had really wow. no idea at the time. Yeah. Um, and then I realized it later on and that's a whole other story in itself. But um, and then that went well, you know, and, and I think what happens is, is it was just little pieces that unfolded that started to compound on themselves. Uh -huh. And that's, that's, that's the big thing is it's really easy to think so far ahead about what you're not doing. But if you just take like a second to look back and really, this is the only reason you should look back in your life is to just mm -hmm. see how far you've come. Um, you know, it was all starting to kind of add up on itself. And I look back and I laugh because the process was so uh, not on purpose, but, um, it just unfolded the way that it did to where it was literally just me taking these small steps. They would compound mm -hmm. on each other and I would start building more confidence in that, um, to where, you know, what went from me doing these small town things was now I was playing in town shows and now I was taking trips out to Nashville here and there to start writing with more people. And I'd start having these really successful rights. And then it was like, well, you know, I play out here. Maybe when I'm out there in Nashville, I can start playing some shows out there while I'm doing these mm -hmm. rights. So it was like, now all of a sudden my trips were for shows and for rights. And then, you know, um, I, you know, I was so focused on that, that you just kind of, again, like you attract what your main focus is on. And because I had put the fitness now on the wayside, and really was like, felt like it was ready to be, you know, um, put up and put a hundred percent of my attention on that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's later on, I was, you know, doing these things, working my way, working my way. And then all of a sudden the voice came to me and, um, you know, the, the time that they had come to me, I did not do a tryout. It was a, a situation where they called me up and was like, Hey, you know, we'd love to have you on the show kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, it was, um, you know, it's weird because that's kind of the one part that I feel like there really was no, like super trigger like into like when it all happened you know it just kind it's of kind of evolved. yeah it was like a slow evolving organic process of me mm -hmm. just really making sure to put the time and the energy into that and you know be present and take away um from every moment what i could and use mm -hmm. it for the next thing and just let it compound on itself and when you you, you mentioned we when we start the conversation you 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 hit a, a block of um depression when you yeah. got onto the voice because your team was taken away yeah when i got when off when you... i got off of the show i did yeah. yeah yeah when did you when did you have to face your demons when did you realize that you had to face your demons from your past when did that how did that manifest or did it did it become an evolution of just you know knocking them down one by one yeah so when i was on the show um what really triggered that wasn't it, I would say I, I didn't realize it. Like what really started with the with facing my demons portion, um, I, I didn't realize it until I was off and I had already started doing some deep mm -hmm. deep digging and focused on why I was feeling so lost in that moment. Um, where what I started unleashing some demons was uh, when I was on the show. I was very 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 heavily interviewed um, about a lot of stuff with my dad and things that I'd never publicly spoke about before. I mean, it all kind of mm -hmm. came so quickly. Um, and then while I was on the show, uh, my dad actually passed away. So oh. I, so I, uh, I went through a phase where I felt like, I don't really know how to word this correctly. Um, I felt like there was, although I had, although I had verbally given him, um, attention at the fact that I've forgiven him and mm -hmm. um, I was able to move on with some things. I think there was some still unanswered questions and things that I wanted from him. 
just to kind of know like why he treated us the way that he did and maybe dig a little bit deeper into that. And I never really got the chance to do that. And, and mm -hmm. I don't really know if I even would have ever, to be honest with you. Um, and that's kind of uh, something that, you know, is still kind of a question, but I, I don't know if I ever would have ever asked that. I think it was just that because I was still so young. Like I was yeah. so, so young for my, for my dad to pass away. Um, still, still am young for my dad to pass away. I'm in my twenties, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. But, but uh, it was one of those things that it was just like, well, I would have liked the chance to, if I could have, you know, like I maybe would have had a little more, I would have liked a little more time to maybe, you know, grow into myself a little more and maybe have the confidence and really know how I would have liked to have those conversations with him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just more so the fact of like not getting that choice. It was just taken from me. Um, yeah, and that really okay. affected, that really affected me for a while. Um, and, you know, I, because when I got off the show, everything else was happening and everything was, you know, being stripped from me so quickly. Um, it was all kind of compounding on itself, you know, and I, I did, I felt really, um, lost in that moment. I felt really confused. It was a lot of abrupt changes in my life really, really quickly. Um, and I, I just, yeah, I, I, at that moment, I just knew that I had to, uh, no one was going to be able to, to answer those questions. Um, and, to really figure out what was going on internally, except for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, I just really went within and I really started, um, doing things that I felt like would help. Like I was really big into, like I said earlier, uh, figuring out what kind of meditation was good for me, being able to get quiet with my mind and dig deep. Um, I became really big into self-help books and being able to mm -hmm. just that was my, you know, way to reach out for help and to kind of figure out like what would be the next step for, you know, me to um, better learn about myself and uh, better, you know, um, partake in the process of um, digging. How, so there's a lot of people get kind mm -hmm. of a bit nervous when the word meditation is mentioned because it can be so many different things for yeah. so many people. So I have friends who use going out in the countryside or going out on adventures and the, you know, nature, yeah. natural meditation. What is it for, what is it for you and how did it really help you quiet your, did it quiet your mind or did it bring more clarity? How did it help you personally? What does it do for you? That's a great question. You know, it's a little bit of both meditation for me. Like when, when I talk about meditation, um, you know, my process is legitimately being in a quiet space to where, I drowned out all of the clutter that's in my mind, all of the things that are coming from our ego that are telling mm -hmm. you you're not enough or you're not doing this fast enough or you're not, you know, reaching this goal fast enough or whatever, you know, whatever the the, the BS that shoots your way on the mm -hmm. highway of your mind because my mind is never yeah. ending. So it's a matter of figuring out a way to legitimately quiet that for the first time in your like day. Turning down the volume of that negative well, self-talk. Yes. And I've become <laughs> to the point where I can literally think about nothing, which is like unreal. Right. That's a lot. <laughs> it's really hard to do. And it's been a lot of time. It was a lot of time because it used to not, I used to not be able to do that. Um, yeah. and I, and I legit can just be empty minded, which is amazing. And then I sit on that and I allow, um, because it's quiet, I allow, the truth to come through, which is uh -huh. getting closer to my source energy, God, whatever you want to call it. I, you know, for me, meditation yeah. is equivalent to it, to prayer in a way, because it's, mm -hmm. for me, it's getting closer to that energy that's higher than you. Um, mm -hmm. and hearing the truth and letting that truth speak through. And now you're hearing not only what you really truthfully feel about yourself from within, um, but inspired action. Like I've had things come to me in meditation that, you know, things not necessarily that I would normally think of because I got all the clutter out of the way. And now the truth is telling me what I really need to be hearing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I know that's kind of woo woo sounding. No, no, it's not woo woo. It's, <laughs> you know, it's different for everyone. I mean, I like to just literally ground myself. Like I will lie down on the ground and just yeah. feel like any negative energy kind of seep through me. Yeah. And if I do that for five minutes and just let everything rest, then I feel so much more whole and, re-energized again so it's yeah. just different for everyone isn't it 
Oh, for sure. You know, and I think, I think that it's important to find your process because like what someone else does is not going to work necessarily for you, you know? And, um, yeah, you know, I, I am a huge fan of the works of, uh, Abraham Hicks and, Uh um, she has literally been, uh, a life, a life changer for me in the ways of like how I, uh, like to meditate and how I like to get quiet and how, um, I want to, how I want to, what relationship I want to have with myself, you know? Uh And based on what you've learned now, what would you, what would you say to your younger self when you were, when you were leaving home and you decided that you were going to, you know, set up with this guy who turned out to be, you know, similar to your dad, what, what advice would you give to yourself now if you were to go back in time and say uh something to yourself what would you say to yourself it's, based it's, on what you know that's now? always such a weird question for me because like <laughs> i still consider myself like a baby in life in a lot of ways like i'm still so young but at the same time like it's funny because <clears throat> for a young woman i've lived a lot of life like probably too much life than i should have i've <laughs> It's pretty crazy the things that I've done yeah. and the wild things that I've done and should have done. But, uh, you know, looking back, I would, I, the biggest thing that I would say is, and I, and it sounds kind of cliche, but it, 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 it always works out. It really does. Uh-huh. Like I, there's been so many times that I've, um, I've focused on something that I really ultimately had no control over. And okay. I've really just pushed and pushed and pushed to try to change it, but it's not going to change for me. You know, it's just not. And you have to be able to realize when to just let go of certain things Mm -hmm. and allow life to allow, allow the trust of the universe to take over and still be able to feel like you're living life with purpose. It's a balance thing. It's just a big balance Mm -hmm. thing. Being able to find balance is the number one thing. Just being able to really, find that great space of working towards what you want, but allowing as well. And Mm -hmm. that's like the biggest thing um, that I wish I would have learned even earlier in my life. Um, You know, the, the voice was a great example of that for me. There was a lot of things on there that I really feel like um, were interesting choices. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And I had to just let go. You know, I had to be, that and ultimately say like, this isn't, because of me, you know, I'm giving everything I've got. And, and even my relationship with my dad, you know, just stemming from that, I gave everything that I had to be a good daughter. And for the longest time I blamed myself, you know, I blamed myself for things that I should never been blaming myself for. Um, but that was all about him. That was all about his demons. And, um, you know, it's really easy to come out of a situation like that, feeling like you're the screw up, you know, and, and to blame yourself and not absolutely. realize that it's the other person's responsibility to own it and to <clears throat> yeah. deal with and, it. And for a long time I did, you know, as, as a, you know, a kid, like just, just a, you know, a super, super young coming into teen and teenager um, to, to feel like I was um, a cause for a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. To feel like I was a burden. I was, you know, um, you know, that's just, that's a lot. And I, I would, you know, I would tell, I would install in my, Uh, younger self that, you know, you just have to be able to realize that things are going to happen and they're out of your control and you just have to be able to focus on yourself, look within and, you know, stay the course, stay the Mm -hmm. course. And, you know, it's, it's crappy, obviously, of course, like you want to have a great relationship with your dad Mm -hmm. who doesn't, you know, yeah. if I would have had that choice, it would have been great, but also I wouldn't be the woman I am today either. You know, I'm, he's, he's made me that the, the strong woman that I am. And, you know, I chose that. I believe that, you know, in my higher self, for whatever reason, chose this life and the lessons that I came down here to learn. And, you know, it's all for a reason. And um, even though there's times where I feel like I understand it and, and there's times where I don't, um, you know, it it's all been the sum of what I am now. And I'm, I'm yeah. so proud of the woman I am now. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I want to ask you a question with regard to your songs because you've been releasing some amazing songs. Strong is just so beautifully portrayed. And I think there's a really deep message behind that song. Which which song are you most proud of from a evil like 
evolving if you imagine yourself coming being a, like a butterfly bursting out of the chrysalis and and evolving oh. as an individual which one are you the most proud of that's such a good question you know there oh, this thing is gonna drive me nuts there are so many things i'm sorry my ear is driving me crazy <laughs> it's, <the> problem. <laughs> it's like not staying in my ear um you know it's funny because i feel like like whatever i release at that moment becomes my favorite and then i trump it and then i trump it and then i uh, literally like just keep beating it and i'm like oh my god and i i feel like that's how it should be with someone's career like if they're really uh -huh. doing it right like and they're constantly learning and pushing themselves like they should just be getting better and better you know yeah um it's been really exciting to see how much my music has evolved and uh -huh. there's so much that i love looking back for what it was and what i was able to say at that time and the message that i wanted to give out and strong is one of them um i have two different versions of it and i loved it so mm -hmm. much that i needed to cut it again um and put it on my 21 jumpstart album and uh, i feel like that is a message that the message itself is so relevant with something that i will always say um it's something it's a it's a it's a it's a song that i actually wrote myself um, and produced, and I actually wanted it done for the program that I do my 501c called the strong program. And it mm -hmm. kind of became the theme song of it. So it's something that will always be so relevant to me, but it's funny. Um, kind of what I was saying earlier is like, you know, I do something and I love it and I live in it. And then it's like, I beat it. And there's a song that's coming. It's actually unreleased. I haven't even announced it yet. So I'll announce it here first. Um, yeah. yes, there's a song <laughs> and it's called, it's called part of me. Um, I wrote, me, yeah. I wrote it. Yes. I wrote it with, um, a band, uh, called radio romance, um, Steve, Virginia, uh, the two guys in there, it's Josh Gramling, Sam Hayes and excellent writers. We get into the room and we decided that we wanted to tackle something that we felt like was so relatable because we had all felt it personally and felt like there's so many other people in the world that had to go through this. And it was super inspired by a lot of the stories I just told you with some of the exes and the people that I had experienced in my life that, you know, at that time <clears throat> I gave so much and jumped so hard with that ex that was, you know, just became crazy, you know, and uh, I had other ex-boyfriends and other people. And I, and there was times in my life where I gave so much of myself to a person, including my dad, like so yeah. much of who I was blaming myself. And I gave that to him. I gave him that ability to do that. And mm -hmm. the song is about losing someone that you really invested so much into, but realizing that even though you feel like they've taken a part of you, there's still a bigger part of you that is always going to be stronger and shine brighter. Mm -hmm. And you are able to push through anything because no one can take that part of you away. So mm -hmm. it's talking about the part of me that lives in me forever and no one has can ever get a hold of. Um, so Thank it's a, you. it's a really, really cool song and it's really strong. Um, Sam and radio romance actually sing on it. So it was actually a duet. So, uh, it's coming out. Um, oh, I haven't even announced the thing. release date yet. It's coming out, um, October 12th. So I'm, I'm wow. That's I'm here first. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, so we're announced, we're announcing it here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to um, go ahead and drop the cover. So, wow. yeah, wow. It's, it's exciting. Do you know what I think? that really resonates with me the part of me because it's easy when you've been through a really difficult time isn't it that you feel like someone's taken something from you yeah. but when you you can actually what I love about your story with your dad is that you have taken his negativity and amplified it into positivity back into yourself and also into your journey and your mission so although he may have taken a piece of you what you got back from him is multiplied 10 15 fold in such a really beautiful way that your your voice Thank is you. you know projecting out to the people that really need to hear it and and hear your story and and hear the beauty that that is is your message and your mission and your and your your talent it's, Thank uh, you so much. I mean, it yeah. means more than you know. You know, I uh, I can truthfully say that when I started doing this career, uh, it was exciting because I felt confident and I felt like, oh my God, I'm gonna, 
you know, I have the confidence to do this now after everything I've worked to, to get here, you know, and, and yeah. I changed my whole body and I changed my whole mind. I had to go through these crappy boyfriends, you know, yeah. um, I finally got to that level of confidence and I was so excited because I was like, yeah, now I can focus on being famous. You know, I yeah. focus on being rich and famous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you, you start doing it and you start writing music and you start really digging into who you are and putting time into it. And, uh, it's one of the most, um, it's one of the most interesting things that I feel like it's one of the reasons why I'm so grateful that my career has been such a steady trajectory instead of a big pop-up and a big flash in the pan kind of career. Yeah. Because when you do it really fast like that, you start to, you, you miss a lot of the story. You know what I mean? And yeah. because things have been moving at just a steady pace and the momentum yeah. has been so steady, I've been able to really capitalize on me and my story and what I really want out of this. Um, and time has made me realize that all that stuff, all that, all the initial reasons I wanted everything was such, such ego driven shit, you know? Yeah. Um, and it became so much bigger than that. It became now that you know, I, I have a story to tell and I have a platform yeah. and I have people that yeah. I can literally tell every day that they're enough and they can get something out of that, not only from my music, but my socials and my strong mm -hmm. program, you know, my nonprofit organization that I started later on in my career. I didn't just up and start that when I started doing music, you know, that came mm -hmm. along with the story. Um, you know, it became a mission to speak the truth, you know, like there's yeah. so much BS in this industry and the yeah. media, you know, people know that, um, artists are one of the number one people that have a hand in the media and they're looked upon as idols. And these people that have these amazing platforms don't do enough to affect outside of their bubble. It's all about their world. They're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And there's so, there's too many artists that, that have, such a huge advantage to be able to do something great and they never do. And, mm. uh, learning more of that and being surrounded more by more people who I know personally that have huge careers and they just don't do anything that affects outside of their world. Um, it became disappointing to me and it made me really want to change everything about what I wanted in this career. Yeah. So it really means so much to me that you say that because, um, you know, time really worked me into who I am now. And it really is. It's a true passion of obviously releasing amazing music and doing what I can as an artist and what fuels my yeah. soul, but taking that and turning it into something so much bigger that can move other people, whether it's through music, but also just by my example. Yeah. And I think that's really powerful. And it really shows through on both your interviews that you've done and also your songs and the lyrics behind your songs. You can tell that that, you know, your heart is uh, centered on on just giving yourself out to the world to help other people be Thank the so best much. version of themselves. So so given um, this and I know you've said you're releasing your new your new is it your new song part of me on October the twelfth? I do. So the that funny, right? yeah, the funny thing is, is that it's actually not the next single. So that's why it's coming. I'm releasing it here first. The, <laughs> the, the one that's coming next, just so people don't get confused, it's called "Mess Me Up." Um, it's oh with, yeah, uh, Nico. That. Yes, it's with Nico Bray, amazing producer out in Germany. Love working with him. Um, and then we're announcing a week after that song actually drops that in um, and that October 12th, we're going to go ahead and have part of me release as well. So it's going to yeah. be three, actually three new songs. That's the two of them. Yeah. There's one more that's coming after part of me, but um, it's going to be release after release after release into the end of the year. And then we're kicking off January with a, a huge release. So uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. So what's next for you? What, <laughs> what is, you know, if you think about, we talked about you growing into this, amazing person that you are now and, and really you. pushing the le pushing the next level you know you're going beyond what you thought you were truly capable of what is that next level what's that big growth curve for you wow you know you it's i never had that question i actually really love that you're asking it um because you know it is so much more than just the music you know obviously on a on a music topical standpoint um just continuing to push my artistry as much as I can, whether it's, um, you know, where I'm playing or even what I have to say in my music. You know, I want to be a person that can unashamedly speak the truth like I do and do it in a way that is digestible. And that's always the, 
And that's always the battle. You know, my, I, I have grown to have a passion for releasing commercial music that is extremely digestible and easy to hear, but also has a hell of a message behind it, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm still saying something, even though it's like, damn, this is a, this is a bop, but like, yeah. shit, it still says something like it's a bop with a message, you know? So, and positive as well, which I love about your yes. messaging is, is it's always really upbeat and uplifting and the, and the majority of it is we've got yeah. the one that's the one <laughs> Most that's, this one that's coming out, um, that's actually going to be a, a Halloween release. It's a little sinister and it's actually showing, okay. it's coming back to a little bit of my dark side that I was talking about that I had when oh, okay. I was a kid and oh, it's angsty awesome. and it's interesting and it's a, it's a really cool story. Um, and we're actually going to be doing a play on an old movie from it, which is really cool. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's inspired by that, which is really cool. So, um, we kind of based the song around that general story and rewrote it. Um, yeah. so I'm really excited about it because I do have a storytelling side to me, but I really am fueled by like the majority of my songs is like, I want to say something, you know, I want, I want yeah. the majority of my stuff to say something and you feel like you can listen to it and take something away from it in, in your own, uh -huh. in your own, um, perspective, you know? Um, so that's number yeah. one. And then number two, of course, you know, just like one of the biggest things that has become such a huge focus for me is my strong program and being able to take that. And like, I would love, it would be a dream because, you know, everybody calls it, um, uh, as if the, a Tony Robbins convention met, mm -hmm. um, a live show. And I actually come out and I do a live performance around, um, my songs. And I'm actually doing mm -hmm. a convention, um, a motivational convention around these songs that I'm singing. And it's actually different tiers. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. No, um, it sounds there's nothing, amazing. There's I love nothing it. like it, which is cool. It's copywritten. <laughs> it's literally like we have a booklet and a soundtrack and, um, uh -huh. we've worked so hard on it and, uh, it's, it's really for what it is just done so well. Um, COVID really kicked that in the butt to be honest with you. And, um, that's one of the things that I would love to see, as I flourish and as I grow that the bigger I get, um, that gets as big too. And right now, it, too. yes. And right now, you know, get it's stronger. a program. Yes, absolutely. And you know, <laughs> right now it's a program, um, majority for kids, but my biggest goal would be able to take it and bring it to adults too, and make an adult version of it. Because, you know, I truly believe, you know, I would, <laughs> I would take this program to schools and boys and girls clubs all over, you know, um, in, in Florida is where I started. Yeah. And, um, all over, you know, the, the, uh, country is where we're going to start taking it. And, um, I, I do these conventions and I'd, uh, walk off the stage and I'd be going down to go sign things for the kids and yeah. I'd get stopped by the school board. Cause they'd usually, they're so, they were always so good to me. They'd always have me like in a green room and they'd all, all the teachers and everybody would come in that were there with their classes. And they'd be like, wow, I took a lot away from that. <laughs> <laughs> man, I need to do an adult version of this one day. So, um, so that's kind of the goal is to maybe make it like a, you know, um, to expand it and really see bigger than what I even saw for it. Yeah. Um, so that would be a, a wonderful thing. I would love it within the next 10 years that the actual program is being done in, uh, municipal auditoriums or stadiums. And I would love wow. to see that happen. Yes. So, um, that is definitely one of the goals. Um, um, you know, centric around what I do with my artistry, which, um, you know, mainly is fuel for me. And that's part of what I feel like is a piece of my purpose, but not necessarily the whole thing. So, uh -huh. so what, so given this show is all about brain health and unchaining yes. your pain, and you've really shown how you've been able to do that through your music and music, when we started the conversation was your escape mechanism, and it's now become your passion and purpose in life. What would you say to somebody who is struggling as a kid um, or even an adult and they've been through an abusive relationship mentally and physically, um, what, what pe one piece of advice would you give them um, oh. to help them really unchain their pain? That's a great, great um, question. And, and it would be to lean into the things that are your passions because a lot of the times they're linked to your purpose. Um, and you'd be, you'd be surprised by how, um, synchronistic it is, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't doubt that there was a reason why music was what made me escape. You know, I mean, I, I played tennis all of my life and I never felt, 
uh, you know, what I love for music. And that's eventually why mm -hmm. I, I let it go because um, it was something that I'm, I'm very athletic and uh, I was damn good at it, but it was like, I was doing it because I was good at it. And it became yeah. something that I just felt like I had to do instead of okay. I really wanted to be doing. Um, and, you know, lean into those things that you, they don't, that don't feel forced, you know, lean into them yeah. and you'll find that like, look for them. You know, yeah. a lot of the times, um, it's just a matter of going and trying new things and allowing yourself to, um, be vulnerable and uh -huh. allowing yourself to try new things that, that could open new doors and lead you to find what you really, really enjoy the most in life. You know, whether yeah. that's kayaking or music or, you know, dog training, whatever it is, like, <laughs> you know, do it and keep yeah. doing it and hone it, hone in on that craft. Yeah. And I wish I would have done that earlier. I wish I would have pursued playing music earlier, you know, and, uh, looking back, you know, that's what I would, that's what I would say is just to really dig yourself into it and let yourself, you know, just go into what you love. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you'd be surprised with, you know, how it's probably, you love it for a reason, you know, and it's, it's linked to something that maybe you're supposed to do later in life, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I would, I, I would say that's the biggest thing is just allowing yourself to, to, Explore. To let, to explore yeah exactly yeah I think it's so important as well isn't it because you never know what you truly what tr truly lights your fire until you take the time to try as many different things as possible and and discover what what is your passion and purpose and yeah pushes I, mean, you in the I went down a pretty dark road of like really being young illegal partying and doing things that I should not have done yeah and I I am so glad that I came out of that stage because it was going, I was going down a very dark path. Um, yeah. and, uh, I really believe that if I would have allowed myself to just feel stupid and be mm -hmm. vulnerable and be bad at something like that's, that's a lot, why a lot of people, they don't jump in because they're afraid that they're going to look like they're going to look dumb. They're going to be bad mm -hmm. at it. Who cares? Like you have to be bad at it first to get good. And I think that's why okay. I put doing it so long. I, I wouldn't allow myself to go from listener to, to doer, you know, because I yeah. was so worried about the process of sucking, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is understandable given your, your history that you were told that you were, you know, not good enough or not yes. enough. Yes, Dr. So that, you get that was it. Your, <laughs> that was your, you know, your broken record going around all the it time. It was a you vicious had to take a cycle. <laughs> it was an evil, vicious cycle because I didn't yeah. want to suck because I sucked at everything to my dad, you know? Yeah. Um. So you, you get it. <laughs> this is why yeah. you're a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a damn good doctor. So, <laughs> but um, no, that's exactly what it was. Um, yeah. But yeah, allow yourself, like allow yourself to allow drag. yourself. Permission to fail. Yes. And Give yourself to permission to fail and then grow, you know, grow from yeah. it and keep pushing and like, don't just fail and be like, oh, well, I sucked. Yeah. You still love it. If you're still feeling passion for it, that's a sign. Keep yeah. it going, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, I, 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 I did that way too late. And that's my, that would yeah. be my advice, like to literally delve in because I would have saved a lot of time. A lot of trouble and a lot of close calls, call, calls that I probably should not have been here on this planet right uh -huh. now. And, uh, wow. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I would just, uh, I, that's what I would do. <laughs> wow. No, that's great advice. I, I really love it. And I don't think people take the time to realize that you have to give yourself that grace and that permission to, to be vulnerable and to do what is ultimately going to be hard. Yeah. and require work to, to get to, to the place that you want to be. So, yeah. but I just and remember, how you know, someone was right there. Someone was right there doing the same thing. You know, we've all had to be in that stage where we were a beginner and where we sucked, yeah. you know, everybody right had to suck from the beginning. Walking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how can people find you and, and learn more about your music and connect with you? How can Thank they you get in touch with you? 
Oh, I love, thank you for asking that question. So um, it's super easy to find everything um, on uh, my website, which is www.justlymusic.com. And uh, you can literally from there get to my socials, every single one of them. Um, I'm super active on Instagram and Facebook. I'm I'm going to be very honest. I'm a terrible TikToker. <laughs> I, I'm true. I'm eventually going to get better. I feel like it's going to be my next year's resolution to like maybe put some time into it. But I'm very active on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry, you can probably hear my little baby, my puppy in the back capo, (laughs) (laughs) um, but, um, but also too, my tour schedules on there, all of my merch, um, my clothing company, which is called boots and hose is on there, um, which is a, it's a, it's a working boot and a gardening hoe. Um, and it's for, (laughs) (laughs) and it's for, um, it's a, it's a play on stepbrothers, but Uh it's also, it's also, uh, uh, realistically for just the, the person that loves good old rural country clothing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a uh, it's a, just an all American brand for sure. So, um, you know, you can literally find everything that you'd ever want to find about me, um, on my website. So yeah, definitely go to justlymusic.com and, uh, anything that you want to find, it's all there. <laughs> Well, Justly, thank you so, so much for coming on the show, Brain Health for Unchaining Your Pain and giving yourself permission to be vulnerable and share your story and be that true beacon of light and positivity for people going forward. Uh, oh, thank you, Dr. Ruth. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. You are a wonderful person. Um, oh. Thanks for letting this loudmouth Italian on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, and I look forward to hearing your next release, Mess Me Up. Yes, you got to make sure you let me know what you think of it. It's important to me, so I would oh, I would yeah. love to know your thoughts, and uh, I hope you love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Thanks again. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to like and share this episode and leave a review on my website or on Apple Podcasts. If you're looking for opportunities to optimise your brain health or unchain your pain from a past trauma, make sure you visit my website www.ruthmaryallen.com and use the code PODCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off all programs. And always remember, you are not stuck with the brain you have. You have the power to make it better. You have the power to unchain your pain and optimize your brain power and performance so that you can win back energy and time doing what you love. episode of Brain Health Unchaining Your Pain with Dr. Ruth Allen is for educational and demonstration purposes only. The information shared in each episode should not be interpreted as medical advice. This episode should not be used to self-diagnose or self-treat any health, medical or physical condition. Do not use this episode to avoid going to your healthcare professional or to replace the advice they give you. Consult with a trusted healthcare professional before doing anything contained in this episode. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact www.ruthmaryallen.com forward slash connect.